Hello, readers. I'm gonna gut you like a fish. Hey everyone, it's Holly, and today I have some book recommendations for fans of Scream. So we have some slashers on here and also some whodunit novels that fall a little bit more in the thriller category. Basically any book that is reminiscent of the movie Scream. I cannot tell you how excited I am for the newest Scream movie to be coming out this week. So I had to make this video because I don't know if you guys are like me, but when I watch something that I absolutely love, suddenly I just want to consume myself with it and be surrounded by it. And you know, I don't necessarily want a home invasion to happen to me with a psychopathic killer in a mask. So therefore, I like to get that in books. So I put together this list for anybody who is looking to further consume themselves in a Scream-like environment. The first one I'm gonna start off with is Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Cesare. This one is young adult, but trust me, it does not read like that. Basically, the only reason that it is considered that is because the characters are in high school. Otherwise, this one, of course, has your bloody, gory kill fest. The kill count does not disappoint in this one, and it's also murderous clown rampage. So perfect. This one really is reminiscent of all of the beloved slasher movies. It is funny, campy, everything you could ever ask for, and top notch. One of my absolute favorites. And Clown in a Cornfield 2 will be coming out this year, I believe in the summer. So it's the perfect time to pick it up or reread it. This one is a favorite of mine. There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. This one I would recommend a little bit more if you do enjoy young adult more than adult because this one has a little bit more of a love story included into it. However, the kills in this one are insane. The overall feeling of this book is just so terrifying because the killer will go into someone's house and just misplace things and move things around. And then the way that they kill people is insane. This sounds crazy. I sound like a psychopath explaining this, but it is wild. Just the overall creativity because Slashers, I'm gonna be honest, a lot of these books sound exactly the same as I explain them to you guys with just maybe a different setting because that's kind of the idea of slashers. They're not supposed to be necessarily great, but for whatever reason, they end up being spectacular. So this one I would definitely have to say is very creative, a lot of fun. There's so much comedy sprinkled throughout this one. There are many, many tropes thrown throughout this book that are very similar to the plot lines of Scream, so highly recommend it. The rest on this list I haven't personally read myself, however I did a lot, like a lot, of research to see how much these actually were similar and I think I compiled a pretty good list for you guys. So this first one that I have is Taste Like Candy by Ivy Tholin. This one's about eight girls who break into the Poison Apple Carnival for a scavenger hunt and once this scavenger hunt is complete, they will celebrate their senior year of high school. But someone else is lurking throughout this carnival and they are slashing their way through their victims and quickly they start to realize that this is personal. Kill River by Cameron Rubik. Rubik? I'm so sorry. This one takes place in the 80s and it is a group of people who go on a summer camping trip and then they mysteriously find a water park in the middle of the night. So naturally they think, hey, let's go hang out at the water park after dark alone and nothing bad will happen. And someone decides to go on a murder spree. Just looking by the cover of this one, you can tell that this one truly goes into some old school 80s horror. It says there's lots of gore, lots of blood, and everything else that you would expect. Under the Blade by Matt Serafini. 25 years ago, there was a brutal murder spree at a camp and Melanie is the sole survivor of that tragic event. Today, Melanie's teacher career is plummeting, so she decides to take a visit back to her past and try to make a living for herself in other ways that involve her researching and looking a lot more into the events that have occurred for some reason, because there's no other option other than to dig into your past and revisit you 
surviving everybody around you getting killed. I, I don't know, that's just what the synopsis says. But as she's doing this research, a lot of skeletons come out of the closet and she is uncovering some secrets. Secrets that someone would be willing to kill to protect. Literally every single review that I've seen just absolutely loves this and says it is different from anything you would ever expect, which is a nice change from a lot of slasher horror novels. Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez. This is one where a bunch of friends go to a cabin and one by one they are picked off. But this one is a little bit different from your average slashers because you actually get the first person perspective of the killer and cannibal. So this is a cannibalistic slasher horror novel that is supposed to be very, 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 very gory. Do not eat, I was gonna say eat. Please don't eat this book. It, yeah. I don't know if there's a word for people who eat books, but I'm gonna consider it a cannibal because eating books should be as much of a crime as eating people because it's a book. They have feelings. There's lives within the pages, you know? Anyways, so what I was saying is do not read this one if you are queasy on the stomach and you don't like gore. <laughs> the Last Final Girl by Stephen Graham Jones. The synopsis is a little bit vague and weird and mysterious, but what I can kind of gather from this one is that it is a story about different final girls who are battling to be the last remaining final girl. So it's supposed to be very campy, hilarious, just nothing serious at all. The reviews are very polarizing because this is not meant to be a very serious or like plot driven kind of story. This is basically just for the sole purpose of being slasher comedy. So read at your own risk. If you're not a slasher fan, you're probably not going to enjoy this one. And it's just a bunch of high school girls like battling each other as far as it sounds. I mean, it's exactly as the title says, the last final girl. So <laughs> my heart is a chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This one is about a girl who is a horror fanatic, which is all fine and dandy until her rural hometown ends up being a real life slasher movie. And she is fighting to protect those that she loves. What's awesome about this one is when they involve the love of horror movies as well. So you can kind of like relate with the main character that way. And it kind of puts yourself in their shoes and it makes it all the more terrifying. The Mary Shelley Club by Goldie Goldovsky. The blurb on this one literally says, a deliciously twisty YA thriller that Scream meets Karen McManus. So there you go. Perfect. This is another one where the protagonist is a very big fan of horror movies and she doesn't really fit in with her new school so she joins this club. It's basically just a bunch of outcasts who pull a bunch of pranks. They might not always do the right things with these pranks and sometimes they go a little bit too far and then one day this group is targeted. One by one people are being murdered and they need to figure out who is at the bottom of this. Now if you want something that is very, 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 very gory, then go with Camp Slasher by Dan Padavoda. This one is very similar to Friday the 13th because this is a one about a group of counselors at a camp on a lake. This one has a focus on the police as well as the counselors and basically it is just that, a very gory, bloody, not for squeamish kind of read in the woods on a campground by a lake. So basically Friday the 13th, but I figured I'd put it on here because slashers. Final Girls by Riley Sager. This one follows two girls who are the sole survivors of two separate tragic murderous events. And one of these girls is thriving and actually doing pretty well despite some details that she doesn't quite remember. But the other girl is found dead in what looks like a suicide. Hmm. And this is where our other protagonist tries to unravel all of the secrets and see if there's really something else hidden within there. This one falls more on the thriller end of it, but it's definitely worth the mention because in Scream, there's so much murder mystery that 
Anything that really falls in that category can definitely feel a little bit more reminiscent of Scream. Kin by Keelan Patrick Burke. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put so many like gory books on here just because Scream isn't really that gory in my opinion. It's, I don't know, I think it's pretty tame in the gore department, but a lot of these books aren't. But I think like books can get away with it a little bit more than movies, so I don't know. Either way, this one is supposed to be very gory, but... It's gore with a purpose. People say this isn't senseless. There's a reason and that it's a very good reason, which I, I just don't even know what that means. So I got to read this one. This is another one that covers the lives of a bunch of soul survivors of murder sprees. So I'm sure in some way these people connect and get together and then another murderous rampage happens. I don't know, I've just been told this is a blood fest. Disco Death Trap by Cameron Rubik. This is probably my highly anticipated on this entire list because this is just right up my alley. This takes place on New Year's Eve in the 1980s at a roller disco. And of course it is a snowstorm outside. They're kind of trapped in discoing all night with their roller skates until somebody decides to start slashing everybody up. Sounds like a wonderful way to start off the new year. This is another one that really goes back to horror roots and really gives you that old school slasher vibe, so high up on my list. Kill Hill Carnage by Tim Meyer. This is a dual timeline, so we have one that is set in the 90s and one that is set in more modern day. Now in the timeline in the previous years, this is a very typical summer camp masked killer type story, but as you kind of go between the two stories, there might be a little bit of creatures involved, which is not a spoiler, just letting you guys know that that is something that is like within synopsises and explanations of the book and stuff. But this one is supposed to be super funny, highly entertaining, and just a lot of fun. Now this is one that you wouldn't necessarily think would be on a horror list, but definitely, definitely adding it to the list, it is worth the mention, and that is And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. And actually a lot of Agatha Christie novels are perfect whodunits, so I think if you're a fan of Scream you would absolutely love that. They're obviously not as gory, and I think that kind of falls suit best with the movies since they are not that gory anyways. This book in particular is about a bunch of people who are brought to this island and one by one these people are killed off. There's lots of hidden secrets that are revealed and you slowly get to know each character and why they are on this island and I vividly remember, now this is one that I did read back in high school and I just remember being blown away. This book is incredible. There is a reason why this one is across the board one of the most beloved mysteries. Definitely think anybody could enjoy this one. White Rabbit by Caleb Roerig. This one is a queer thriller whodunit novel with a high body count. So this one is about a guy who gets a phone call from his sister who says that she needs help. So he goes to save her and finds her drenched in blood holding a knife and her boyfriend is dead beside her. She is swearing on everything that she didn't do anything, but her brother doesn't believe she is fully telling the truth. The Chalet by Katherine Cooper. Four friends, one luxury getaway, the perfect murder. That's what the blurb says. Murder. Why do I, I always have to say murder like murder. Murder. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, this one takes place in the French Alps in 1998. Two young men ski into a blizzard, but only one returns. So now, 20 years later, Four people connected to the missing man find themselves in that same resort. They all have a secret, and two, they have blood on their hands, and one is a killer in waiting. Someone knows what really happened that day, and somebody will pay. So another 
thriller whodunit novel in the Alps. It's supposed to be super, super atmospheric and perfect for winter. And it definitely sounds reminiscent of Scream because it's always somebody you know, right? So those are just some recommendations that I found that sounded a little bit similar to Scream. And if you love the Scream movies that maybe you would like these books as well. My favorite thing about the Scream movies is that they are highly entertaining, very tense, always make you laugh, and then also have a very good mystery to it. And they just have that perfect combination of horror, comedy, and mystery, and just all combined is just perfection. I absolutely love these movies, and I was really excited to compile a list for you guys of different books that can fall into one or all of these categories that can hopefully be great recommendations for anybody who is just dying to get more Scream content but has already seen the movies. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'll see you guys again soon. Make sure to like this video and also make sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more bookish content from me. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye! Yeah! Ah! <laughs> I'm gonna cut you like a fish. Hello, Sydney. <laughs> This isn't working. <laughs> it's stuck. It's stuck. This is. Oh god. Oh, what have I done? Oh. There was my lipstick. This is my husband's mask. Wipe it off. I want to know who I'm looking at. It's a scream, baby. Hello, Sydney. There's spit. Oh god. If my neighbors can see me right now, I... Let's just hope they can't, okay? We're not gonna even think about the possibilities that they're watching me right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Goodbye. It's still, it's still recording, is it? Did I forget to turn it off? God, I'm dumb.